Hello, this is C.J. Miller. I'm in my apartment uh, in downtown Shreveport, across the Red River from beautiful Bossier City, Louisiana, and here we are. And you know I'm going to talk about my painting. So here we have this, and here we have this. Very different, but uh, kind of sort of similar. So, because um, it's really, I'm just drawing inspiration. And other buildings in my complex, they have this uh, kind of combination of, uh, flat and stucco i think i've talked about that and brick and and uh, and various different uh textures and colors along the facade to um uh break up like looking at one giant you know manufactured it's a giant manufactured home basically but there's about uh ooh, uh yeah, it's probably about 300 units uh, just right now. <laughs> and then they're opening up some other ones later. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a huge little complex. So what I did was I've come over and I've added a little bit of, a, you know, a tone or whatever to break up the monotony of these solid, you know, that solid, it's really a... a a work shed or a temporary building that they put up to, um, you know, do some construction out of as they were working on some other parts of the, uh, complex. And, uh, basically what happened was, <laughs> um, we want, um, I want to represent that, but I'm not quite finished with the detailing on that building. And I've taken lots of liberties with it. I'm taking some liberties because I do have some favorite buildings in downtown Shreveport. But uh, I don't necessarily, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to cram everything that I want to see. I think the eye see things, sees things differently than even a high definition camera. And certainly the eye sees things differently than, uh, you know... <laughs> Uh, than what gets rendered on paper. There are people who can do like a perfect uh, hyper real photo, but that's like when they're doing like an eye or a lip or something and they're way close up on something. And uh, I, I probably could like, you know, yeah, get up in there and just really, really, you know, scrunch it and get real close and blah, 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 you know, and get, get, get some detailing. But, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Um, but so I made a joke about uh, Van Gogh. Doesn't does this look like Van Gogh? But actually, uh, Vincent Van Gogh, Vinny, he is like my favorite um, uh, visual painter. You know, my my, my favorite uh, visual artist uh, painter, and uh, I, I just I love you know the stories of his uh, life. Obviously, get great greatly uh, exaggerated. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, as will happen over time. But, you know, he's only sold one painting, and I have sold um, promptly. Let me let me see. I've given a lot away, but I've also sold some paintings. So let's see. One, two, three. The third one was a donation, but it still brought in money for the, for the charity that, that I donated it to. Uh, Uh, I've sold about eight paintings in, uh, from my uh, first collection. Now, you know, uh, that's great, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's, you know, what can I say? It wasn't in a uh, uh, store or marketplace or whatever. It was online. It was like people that I communicated with online. And since I have gone from like uh, over 2,000 contacts to... Uh, uh, just under 50. I don't have the, uh, you know, the marketability <laughs> that I once had. I still have to work on uh, playing around with uh, doing something here. I want to kind of even this out. But I did do some work and I felt it was really important to, especially a little up close, if there was if there was going to be like a, a sense of, uh, you might need to take this angle and bring it down here. It's, it's something that, that uh, you know, the, as a left-hander, you know, and I paint left-handed, it's, eh, you know, naturally I want to kind of, you know, 
but yeah. Uh, so I want to think about that. Uh, but for the most part, uh, yeah. I will say that the people who have seen some of my paintings, they actually have sort of compa compared it sometimes. Usually not so much in accomplishment, in the accomplishment of the painting, because I don't think it's that great. But the competition, uh, the composition and the scale and and the style in which, you know, the kind of, the, you know, uh, kind of uh, gets compared to a Vincent Van Gogh a lot. I know people are looking at this and they're like, oh, my God, no, hell no. But because um, he uses like micro, like individual micro uh, brushes. I do, too. Little tiny micro strokes. I just haven't gotten. I start working large with large uh, bristles and I work my way down. So you'll see once I get uh, into that uh, fine tipped uh, brush and uh, start working with thinner paints and everything. Of course, he worked in, in an era where they did not have uh, acrylic paint available. They had oil paint. And so instead of waiting a couple of days or a few hours for the uh, thinner paints to kind of work, you see I went in and I put a lot more you know, detailing in, in, in the, in what would be the brickwork and decided I didn't mind, uh, the yellow as much popping out. Um, I'm finding out that with acrylic, you know, you can really accomplish a lot if you let texture be, uh, a big part of it too. That means it, it changed the texture of your paint from like water thin to, uh, gloop <laughs> but if you do big globs or gloops of paint uh, you don't really want to want them to be big you want them to be like you know you're dropping it just for texture or something like that you know uh to bring some stuff out but that's just basically an effect that's almost like sculpting uh and so yeah uh and we're looking at this up close when i pull back I look at this the way you would look at something and it's still stupid high definition trust me when you're looking at it without the the hyper christmas crispiness uh, of this camera and you're looking at it with your eyes uh from across the room and everything it really kind of uh you know uh gets a little bit more visual uh, and closer to what uh what it's supposed to be of course here the uh you can see the steeple but i have it off and and it's kind of faded and the reason why and not faded but uh kind of muted i should say and the reason why is because i want to get a sense of uh distance to that you know and then i don't want the uh uh i don't want that that being impending i feel like if i do anything else to that particular cross i if even to bring it out a little bit i feel like if i do then it's going to uh really ruin it so even though it's a little uh lighter than what it should be and it doesn't really pop the the bonus of that is that it's not pulling focus away from everything else you know so like and what <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> so that, I'm doing it this way so that uh, you sort of get like a. I know there are some people who look at, on on a screen rate ratio that you know maybe they're they they can't turn their uh, screens or whatever. If you use your uh, um, control key and your uh, arrow keys. Uh, I think you can, I think there's some commands that you actually can change the uh, direction of the, uh, the uh, screen display on your, on your desktops and laptops and things like that. But also just, you know, shrink your windows down to fit it, <laughs> you know, um, there's a lot more that I have to add here. Uh, I've got an area where I really want to get in here and add some more buildings, uh, so I'm going to play around with some uh, with some geographic liberties. I'm going to take some geographic li liberties and uh, 
And then, of course, I'm really excited about this. Can you tell, like, when I talk, if, if, you, if you listen when I get in here? Um, really, you, this is great. I'm having fun doing this. I don't do a lot of uh, townscapes or cityscapes or anything like that. So I'm having fun with this. I do a lot of, uh, you know, things in nature. I do a lot of things in nature, such as trees, waters, lakes, clouds, things like that, because you you really don't have to do solid, harsh, straightforward lines. You know, uh, nature is not, uh, you know, symmetrical. <laughs> nature is uh, asymmetrical and completely out of balance and has no particular shape uh, from one angle to the next. And it is ever changing and ever growing. You cannot because of the constant change, measure the entirety of a coastline. It, it, it can't be done, you know. Uh, you can create formulas called uh, recursions <laughs> that can help you kind of get a generalization of uh, what's going on in nature, but that's that's really about as close as you're going to get, you know. <laughs> And uh, you're, you're never going to totally understand it, just like you're never going to understand the totality of the value of pi, because that number is infinite and keeps going. No, it, we don't know if it's infinite or not. We just know we haven't reached the end of that damn equation. So, you know, well, I th I'm thinking, okay, so doing a, a, doing a picture. Uh of a townscape or a cityscape or something, uh, it, it's it's not necessarily always changing, but the way that the person looks, views it, the percept the uh, uh, perspective is always uh, changing. So you know, and uh, perception and distance and everything. So the way that I would create and detail that I'd put on this bit. Uh, very different than the amount that I put back there. And that still looks, uh, you know, like maybe I need to go in and kind of fill that in so it doesn't look like a, you know, uh, I don't know. But, you, you know, too dark, then it gets too harsh. Too light, then it looks chalky. So it's, it's a really fun little balance there, you know. Uh, but these are very muted colors. Uh, that's something else that, that Van Gogh worked a lot in, muted, muted colors. He's got the, you know, especially in that Starry Night. And there's a collection. There's about three different Starry Night photos, or, or picture, not photos, but uh, paintings that he did. There's three of them in, in his Starry Night series. But the one that's really famous is the one that he did from an asylum window where there's this big tower over here. And it's um, basically, he's looking... You know, from a view, the tower. I think that whatever that structure is in that Starry Night painting, I think it represents uh, the asylum that he was in. I do. That's my perception. I always thought that he's looking out of a window of his asylum where he painted that, where he was interned for for uh, a brief time. And so I thought, uh, why wouldn't he put the like? Okay, here's a weird structure of a tower, whatever. It's in the middle of the night, blah, 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 blah. So he did that, and then he went down and he painted the town. Well, my town is comprised of larger structures versus little tiny houses, right? Uh, so it's buildings instead of houses, but as perspective goes on, they get smaller. And then, of course, uh, this is not a starry, starry night. You know, this is, a, a, you know, but... I didn't necessarily know when I started out that I was going to feel that sort of connection. And I know that it's gratuitous and, oh, big old ego and everything like that, but whatever. I've, I've been told that several times, uh, that, I'm, I'm, that my style is similar, even though my accomplishment is not uh, to the level that his is. Because first off, acrylic versus oil, there's no way I would try this level on this big, I've worked with oil. It's uh, horrendous. Um, but there's no way that I'd want to uh, work with uh, oil 
if I didn't have, and I, right now I don't, a, 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 a tripod that can hold this up. I have a photo tripod, but it's not the same thing. So if I'm doing it, if I, if I, uh, if I do, uh, you know, save, I've got some things uh, that I have to save up for, and I'm going to have to put that on my list of things, a couple of tripods so that I can set up and I can, I can work without slumping over the painting, but I can work on it as it's standing, uh, you know, up, you know, so I can look at it as it will be looking. Cause that helps too. When you're painting, it really helps to look straight on at what you're painting. Otherwise you end up getting a skewed perspective with all your paint, you know, your painting and then every, all your buildings look like they're going away. They start up, you know, it's really whatever. So like, instead of, you know, coming straight up, they'd be, they'd be going that way. <laughs> so that was a weird gesture. Get your mind out of the gutter. Um, so my, my, my mind, uh, I, my mind has one foot in the gutter usually. So, um, yeah. Thank you for, uh, if you, if you've watched these painting videos that I've done on this one stupid painting that, that, I, that I'm still working on, I'm going to be working on this probably for another month. Uh, just cause I really now that I'm seeing that, you know, this started out with just, Oh, here's some blue and then a little white on top of the blue. And then, uh, I kept putting layer upon layer upon layer and getting a, vi a visual of where I wanted to go. First, I had to, well, first thing about art is you really do have to just work with a blank canvas and an empty field of, of blankness until you kind of get an idea of where to begin. And even then you may not have a fully formed idea. So inspiration just waiting for this. It is really hard. I don't know. I don't know if anyone, anyone out there is an, is an artist, a visual artist, but it is really hard just to sit and try to conjure up an inspiration. You know, when you know you want to paint and uh, yeah, so there, there is spending time looking at a canvas and waiting to see what's going to happen. And everything matters on something like this. The brush stroke is as much of, of an important factor as, as are the different colors that are being used. The different brush strokes, the different techniques, short stroke, long stroke, soft, you know, as well as the texture of the paint that I've already, that I've already kind of touched upon. And, um, you know, all of that's, uh, equally important. So, um, okay. So I think I have, uh, touted myself enough for this session. Listen, I love you guys. Uh, love and light. Peace.